the don'ts of dressing if you have a pear-shaped body. If you have a pear-shaped body, I think you'll find this video most helpful. Just in case you're uncertain, I'll run over the points that would be the criteria for a pear-shaped body. One of the things that defines if you have a pear-shaped body is the width of your shoulders. If you have a pear-shaped body, you're going to have, like myself, narrow shoulders, and your shoulders will be more narrow than your hips. Pear-shaped ladies have a smaller waist. It's their best asset. And I do encourage you, if you're pear-shaped, showcase your waistline. Pear-shaped ladies, because I am one, we carry our weight on the bottom half of our body. If we gain weight, it tends to go on our thighs. Generally, pear-shaped ladies are small to medium busted. Pear-shaped ladies are curvy, some more curvy than others. And of course, the more pear-shaped you will appear is generally the more weight that you're carrying. I'm only moderately pear-shaped and when I gain weight, and I have recently because of the Christmas season, it's going to show up a lot more on my thighs and my butt, a little bit on my stomach as well. Pear-shaped ladies don't always have a flat tummy. I haven't had a flat tummy since before I had children. And when I gain weight, my stomach isn't flat. Some pear-shaped ladies have thin arms. I used to when I was younger. I had skinny arms actually. These days I don't. Keep in mind while watching the video that some ladies are more pear-shaped than others. But along the spectrum, there's all different degrees of being pear-shaped. Some ladies are quite pear-shaped, which means they're carrying their weight on their thighs and their legs and their derriere. And it will be a lot more noticeable when they're wearing anything tight or figure-hugging on the bottom half of their body. And one thing that I think that can confuse the fact that you are pear-shaped or a woman could look pear-shaped is if she's had her breast enlarged, if she's had breast augmentation. That could appear that her body is more balanced because generally women, as I said, don't have large busts if they're pear-shaped. If you're pear-shaped and you're wondering which pants to stay away from, anything that's tapered, anything that tapers down like this to your ankles. I call those cigar pants, you know, the, the pants that do that. They were very popular in the 19, I think the 1950s and 60s. They look absolutely terrible on me. I never buy what I call cigar pants. And that would apply for skinny jeans or any jean or any pant that tapers in like this at the bottom. Bear shaped ladies look a lot more balanced when they wear straight leg and wide leg. Yeah, we're really lucky we can wear wide leg pants, but steer away from the tapered pants. Own any tapered pants, I don't wear them. They look awful on me but I do have some skinny jeans and they are tapered. So I'll show you what they look like as compared to a pair of straight leg jeans. I don't think they look as good on me as straight leg jeans. I think they're making my legs look a little bit heavy on the bottom and I just don't think that they're balancing out the proportions in my body. All pear-shaped ladies need to avoid pants. that. One style that's in at the moment is crop pants. I think that if you wear them too cropped, and I'm not talking about at the ankle length, I'm not talking about ankle grazers, I'm talking about cropped pants or cropped jeans, inches above your ankles. I don't think they're that flattering on pear-shaped ladies myself. And when it comes to shoes, steer away from thick ankle straps or ankle straps at all if you can avoid them. Anything that's wrapped up around your ankle and got too much bulk around your ankle, if you're wearing a dress or a skirt that's shorter, it's just going to emphasize that your legs are heavier and you're carrying more weight on your bottom. So steer away from ankle straps. And I do have a couple of ankle strap shoes, but I usually wear them with long pants or jeans where you're not seeing my legs. And I would never buy a wide ankle strap or anything wide and thick up around my ankles. I don't do that because I'm pear shaped. I don't do that because I'm petite. And I don't do that because I don't have slim ankles. They're all the reasons why I steer away from too much, too bulky, too heavy around my ankles. And some things to mention about pants again, I am talking quite a bit about pants, but that's because pear-shaped ladies carry their weight on the bottom. We have to be a little bit more mindful than some of the other body shapes about which pants we wear and which ones we choose. Low rise anything is out for us. It really doesn't flatter us at all and we are much better off with a high rise. Now, having said that, not too high rise. 
paper bags. Well, I just don't like paper bag pants on anyone. I'm going to say it, I don't like them. They might suit some women, but I don't think they suit most women, particularly if you have a shorter torso. Mine is only minor short, but some ladies have a short torso, never wear paper bag pants. But for the pear-shaped ladies, I wouldn't wear them. I can wear a mid-rise because I have a short torso or shorter torso. If you're quite short in your torso, the mid-rise might even suit you more than a high-rise. Another look that I don't think is flattering for pear-shaped ladies is wearing your top too long with a pair of baggy trousers or wide leg trousers. I just think that that top is probably going to end on your widest part and that is something really important that pear-shaped ladies don't do. I think it's super important for pear-shaped ladies to take note of where their tops, their blouses, their jackets, their blazers, where they end, not in the middle of your thighs. And when it comes to the longer blazers that are so popular, so on trend, I think go for a longer long blazer. I don't mean super long, but I just mean one that will end over your thighs, go past your thighs, go to the bottom of your thighs. I don't think pear-shaped ladies look good in the long, oversized, blazers, the boyfriend blazers, whatever you want to call them. I think there's too much fabric in there. If you are choosing a longer blazer, make sure it's considerably longer and make sure it's a little bit fitted. And if it's got shoulder pads, it's even better. And whatever you do, avoid double-breasted. Double-breasted does not work on pear-shaped ladies. That is just my opinion and I like double-breasted but because we're narrow in the shoulders, we're smaller at the top, they just swamp us. I just don't think that they balance us out that well. Bodycon dresses, bodycon skirts are not for pear-shaped ladies. Anything too tight-fitting, grabbing around your thighs will not be as flattering as something that's flowing and looser and just skimming over your legs. Having said that, a lot of the famous celebrities that are pear-shaped they embrace their curves. They don't mind showing their curves. We've got Beyonce, we've got Kim Kardashian and JLo. They're all pear shaped and they quite often show their curves, particularly Kim Kardashian. She's almost famous for it. That is personal preference. And if you want to show your curves, more power to you. I do sometimes. Sometimes I wear pencil skirts or skirts or dresses that are a little bit more tight fitting than would be suggested for a pear shaped lady. I'm not completely hung up about showing my curves. It's how my body is and that's, that's how it is. And I embrace it sometimes. But at the same time, I want to look in proportion. And this is the time to talk about an hourglass body shape. Most stylists suggest and suggestions are given for good styling. When you're getting dressed, try and appear, even if you don't, that you have an hourglass figure or more so look like you have an hourglass figure so you'll look more in proportion. So if I was to wear something slightly fitted and I don't wear anything really tight fitted these days, I have a white knitted pencil skirt on now. For some pear shaped ladies, they would think that was deadly. It's a little bit clingy and it's white and it's a pencil skirt. We're told not to wear them. Sometimes break the rule, it's up to you. But as you can see with this outfit, I have balanced it out with an off the shoulder cobalt blue and white blouse. And that's the key for pear shaped ladies. If you're going to be wearing something more fitted on the bottom, balance it out on the top. Make sure you draw your shoulders out some way and add a little bit more bulk in the fabric up the top. This light tan skirt I'm showing you, I bought online some time ago, and it has that sort of fishtail, slightly fishtail bottom to it. When I tried it on, I realized it was more clinging than I thought it was going to be. I haven't worn it because this one in particular really does show up my thighs because it's coming in like this at the bottom. It is accentuating the bottom half of my body and I think it makes it look a little bit bigger. This skirt I've never worn, I don't feel comfortable in it and it will be going to the thrift store. So if you are going to opt for something a little bit tighter on the bottom, a pencil skirt like the white one I have on, make sure it doesn't actually come back in again like the fishtail look like that because it really will accentuate your thighs. The pear-shaped lady, one of the necklines we're told not to wear is a V-neckline or a deep V-neckline. Do I always avoid a V-neckline? No, I don't. I do think though I look better in a square neckline, a scoop neckline and a boat neck. 
I think boat necks are very flattering on pear-shaped ladies. They haven't been around for some time. I haven't seen them in fashion. They used to be. They're harder to find these days, but I do think they are really flattering. And the other thing that's flattering for pear-shaped ladies is wearing something with shoulder pads in it. You can buy t-shirts now and even tank tops with shoulder pads in them. They've been on trend for some time, but making sure you have some little shoulder pads at least in your blazers will give you a nice silhouette. It's going to draw your shoulders out and that's what we need to keep focusing on. We need to keep focusing on bringing our shoulders out and minimizing the fact that we are heavier on the bottom. And as often as you want to, defining your waistline. So we're told there are particular sleeves we're told to steer away from if we're pear shaped. And that would be bat wing sleeves, raglan sleeves, kimono sleeves and drop sleeves. Pretty hard with drop sleeves at the moment because they're so on trend, particularly in sweaters and shirts. That's not to say I don't break that rule sometimes because this particular shirt, and I own two of these, has an extended sleeve. It's, oh, I don't know if you really call it a drop sleeve, but as you can see, it has no actual seam in the sleeve. Unlike the top that I have on, you can see distinctive seams here and from the seams there's gathering. So that's the advantageous style of top that we should sleeve i should say that we should be wearing this type of top that i have on with this particular puff sleeves with all the gathers here this is the type of sleeve that's suggested for pear shaped ladies anything that's puffed or gathered here or extending out and drawing out our shoulders because that's what we're trying to do and flutter sleeves like this are fantastic as well with this flutter t-shirt i've got double lace flutters on that. So that's going to extend my shoulders out and give the impression that I'm more in proportion than what I really am. And what I'm trying to do is look more hourglass because that's what all pear shaped ladies are aiming to do. This is one of my kimonos. I don't know if you can see the seam there on the sleeve, but the seam is sitting down below the shoulder. I'll just put it on. It won't have the same effect. So I've already got puff sleeve, so it's not really going to have the same effect. The seam on this kimono is sitting right down here quite low, right past the shoulder. Because the seam is so low down here, there's no gathering up here or seam up here to extend my shoulders out. Something else that I rarely ever hear mentioned when talking about pear shaped is something I've noticed with myself. When I wear something that's really tight and clingy up the top, like a little camisole, something that's meant to be clingy or is clingy. And if I wear something voluminous on the bottom, if it's too A-line, it just could be a pair of baggy pants. I look more pear-shaped because I'm smaller up the top. It won't apply so much if you're bigger busted than I am, but if you're small busted like I am and you're pear-shaped, don't wear something really clingy up the top and something voluminous down the bottom. And it doesn't have to even be super voluminous, but too A-line, a skirt that is just to a line particularly if it's a maxi skirt it's going to throw it all off balance it will emphasize the fact that you're bigger on the bottom being a chef being a pear-shaped lady myself, when it comes to dresses, I never wear a dress that is at the, joined at the waist, that has a waist on it, but it goes out quite a lot, got very super A-line or got box pleats in it, or it's just got a lot of fabric in it, particularly if it's a dense, thick fabric, something like a brocade on the bottom, you know, that sits out quite stiff. I think wearing any thick, dense, heavy fabrics, particularly if there's quite a bit of it on the bottom, whether it be skirt, dress, it won't do you any favors if you're pear-shaped. Even though A-line skirts are advised for pear-shaped ladies, I steer away from anything too A-line. It's got too much fabric in it. When it comes out this far, it's only going to make you look wider. I think subtly A-lined is the way to go. Skimming over your thighs is the way to know go. more about what to wear if you are pear-shaped. Watch this video that I'm leaving here for this you. This video is a very thorough guide on what to wear that will flatter your body if you're pear-shaped.